Greetings and welcome back to another episode of Titan Repairs. So uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome and please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back and thank you for your continued support. So what I have here today is a 39,001 PS2. Um, it came to me DOA, so I have zero power running through this. Now it came with another one too that I've already fixed and that one ended up being a bad power supply. And usually if you get no life out of these, the power supply is the first thing you would want to take a look at. So what I'm going to do today is crack this thing open and I'm going to actually show you how to check the power supply and see, see what's at fault there. So let's get cracking. All right, first things first, grab your handy dandy egg carton and the screwdriver. And we're going to start by taking off all the little feet on the bottom, feet in the covers. All right, and the next thing we're gonna do, we have eight screws we have to remove. Just pay, pay attention to which ones are the longer ones, and it's gonna be model specific. Some have four, some I think have two. It really just depends. Pro tip here, magnetic screwdrivers make things a lot easier. So if you're looking for screwdrivers to buy the work on electronics, definitely recommend it. Genius me forgot to do this, but before you even do anything, make sure you remove the cover the expansion bay cover, and the warranty sticker. It's always nice having working on one with the warranty sticker so I'm not fixing anybody else's mistakes. And now we can open it. Just be careful when you do, because you got the ribbon cable right here. To make things a little easier, I also like to remove the uh, power switch so that I'm not flopping things around constantly. Then we'll just set the top aside. I don't really work with a whole lot of space, so the less space on my bench I can have, the better. Okay, now we're at the internals. So now to get at the power supply, we have to remove these two screws here. lift this up carefully because there's a ribbon cable here and then there's a connector here just lift your fingernail up pull it out and now we can take the uh, whole thing out of the bottom shell so I just grab it back here in the expansion bag and just kind of gingerly work it around until it breaks free Easy peasy. So now we're just gonna carefully flip this over. By carefully, I mean like be careful of this ribbon cable. You don't wanna damage that. Cause then you have to get a new one and it's a pain in the butt. Well, here's the power supply. So now what we have to do is we have to unplug it and unscrew it from the chassis. All right, now with the four screws unscrewed and it unplugged, how this 
is seated in here, there's a four prong connector on the motherboard itself. So this is gonna be a little tight. So you're just gonna kind of grab it and then kind of wiggle it and pull and then it pops right out. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna need, I do need this power switch. So we're just gonna pull up on it and it slides right out. All right, I'm gonna stop for a moment right here and I have to give big words of warning about working with power supplies. These are very dangerous to work on. If you are not comfortable going any further on this, don't because um, you're putting 110 volts through this thing and a lot of this stuff can be live even after you unplug it. So you have to handle these things with absolute care. If you aren't comfortable working around electricity, don't do it. <laughs> um, send it off to a professional if you're not comfortable at this point. So without further ado, um, how I'm going to test this. The first thing I want to look at actually is this right here. This is the fuse. So depending on your uh, power supply model, the fuse is removable or it's not removable. This one is, but it's being a real pain in the butt. And I'm just gonna inspect it. It doesn't look blown, but I'll show you how to test the fuse. All right, so to test the fuse, you can do a visual inspection. I don't see it blown, but might as well double check it. So I'm gonna put my multimeter into continuity mode. Make it make a beep. The fuse is good. All right, so we'll put it back in. If you have like a power surge or something, Chances are it'll blow out the fuse. Okay, now the next part is going to be dangerous, but we also still need the multimeter. So again, if you don't feel comfortable at this point, stop. I'm gonna start by plugging it in. Make sure the power is off. Plug back in the power supply, and then we're gonna turn it on. All right, so I'm set right now at auto ranging for DC voltage on the multimeter. And you basically need to find the ground. Uh, these probably won't work. I haven't had any luck with it when using them as a ground. It gives false readings. So I'm just gonna put the probe on the shielding on the case of the PS2. The metal shielding covering the motherboard. I'm just gonna probe. All right, so we got no voltage. No voltage. According to all the guides that I looked at, the, the first and the fourth are the ones you want to look at. But yeah, we ain't got any voltage. So this power supply is dead. Okay, so where does that leave us off here? Uh, well, we know the power supply is dead and we're getting no power at the, at the main. So um, we got a couple options. The first option is we can replace this power supply. You can buy replacement ones. I've seen them on eBay and they're pretty cheap. I think they're like 20 bucks, maybe a little more. I don't remember. Uh, I've never actually bought one and tried it. And uh, that might be the easiest route to do because then it's just swap it out, swap it in. Um, but you just have to be careful when you order those is that Sony made a lot of different models of power supplies. Um, so like different components are elsewhere like this could be over here or up there so the cutout profile would be different it's all dependent on what motherboard the power supply is being mated to so you just gotta you just gotta check that um, and that I was actually gonna do this video on how to replace the power supply because I have spare power supplies sitting in the sitting in the box and when I pulled them out to test them for this video um, I noticed they all have the same model number here uh, 1468-623- and there's usually two additional numbers on the end that are different. Um, none of them work, so I actually think with this particular power supply there is a common issue. And like I said, I'm suggest su su suggesting, suspecting that these one of these capacitors or maybe multiple ones failed. So I'm going to recondition this board and that's what this video is going to be about now. So. Basically what the next step is, is we have to take every single one of these out of circuit one at a time and test them with a the multimeter. And I'm gonna show you how to do that next. All right, so next step we're gonna do 
is we're gonna start off by removing the capacitors. We got four we need to test. So I'm gonna start off with this one. So we just gotta make note where it is and then flip the board over. I believe it is there. And if anybody's noticed me wearing different clothes, well, it's a couple days later. I had to run out after I shot the last part of the video. <laughs> I just don't really like using this brush. I'm just gonna put a little flux on, make it flow a little better. from the start that was a lot easier <laughs> All right. that's loose just pull it out there we go set that to the side and then we'll we got to check the values on it so the values for here I'll bring you in Alright, so I'm going to try to uh, point this out best I can. So, to find the value of what you got to test, you have to look for something with an F on it. So this is microfarads, so it says 27 microfarads. So when we test this, we're going to be looking for generally around this number. Hopefully that all came up on camera. <laughs> Alright, so let's get the multimeter and test this out. We are going to turn on our multimeter. We're going to put it in the capacitance. Now I'm going to hit the relative button here. Now what that's going to do is it's going to remove the capacitance from the wires. These are kind of uh, cheapy wires I got off Amazon. Um, they're actually pretty good though, I'm not going to lie. I'll put a link in the description to them if they're still available. And I like them. It came as a kit so I like these because they got the hooks on them. I used to have to use like the leads and then it was a nightmare. You can do it, but you got to get creative to keep the capacitor from moving. So on the capacitor itself, you'll see like a stripe with like a little minus on it. That's the negative. So we're going to connect the black lead to that. And now we're going to take the positive lead and connect that. And that should pretty quickly give us a reading right here on the multimeter. The value is on the side of the capacitor, so we're looking for 35 microfarads. Oh no, that's 35 volts. 27 microfarads. Alright, so right now we have an... up oh, there it goes. We had an open loop, which usually that means it's either out of the range of the multimeter, or the capacitor is bad. And what this is showing me right here, it's at 41. This capacitor is way out of value, so this one's toast. And now just to give you a reference point of what a good capacitor looks like, I'm gonna grab one out of my little tool bag. This one's brand new, so now watch the multimeter. Just to kind of see how fast this will read it. And we're looking for 33 microfarads on this. So it's at 36, that's within, that's within um, tolerance. So that's a good capacitor. So we, I think we have found the fault on this one. So we're gonna put this back in the circuit because unfortunately I do not have any capacitors in stock for this power supply. So just to kind of keep track of where everything is, I'm just gonna put this back in the circuit. So we don't have to get too fancy here, since this is going to have to come back out when I get the parts. 
I'm just gonna take just basically one glob of solder just to hold it in place. All right, so we're pretty much gonna have to leave the video here. There's really not much more I can do right now. Um, I don't have any of these capacitors in stock. So I gotta place an order for them. And I do like to place my orders when I have a lot of stuff to order, because whether I order a few capacitors or a whole bunch of crap, <laughs> the shipping's still the same. So, um, but then again, I also do have all of these, and this is a pretty common issue with the PS2 power supply. So I'll probably, just bite the bullet and just order every capacitor I need to refurbish these things. So uh, that'll have to be another video where we recondition the board and then check to see if it works. So thank you so much again for watching. If you liked the video, please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any comments about this video or ideas for top or topics for future videos, drop me a line down below in the comments section. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you liked the video, that'll help me out a lot. And as always, thank you again for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.